Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, hi, my name is Leah. I make Genshin Impact content, and today we're going to be continuing my Genshin 101 series where I teach you the very basics of Genshin. So today we're going to be going over how to build a team. Just a little disclaimer for the Genshin 101 series, okay? Relax. I know some of you guys are like super meta and that's really cool. I'd love that you guys play that way, but this series is mainly for people who just wanna know how certain things work and like why, and it's like really basic and just kind of breaking things down. This is especially great if Genshin was one of your first RPGs or if you just don't really understand like some stuff. So we're going to be going over roles, like what a DPS, sub DPS and support are. We're going to be going over elemental resonance. So what it means when you have like two pyro in your team, two cryo in your team, like a rainbow team, what that means. And also the most important part is we're going to be going over reaction team composition. So different ways that you can build your team, what that kind of looks like for you, what the reactions actually do and like the stats that go with that and everything. I'm really excited for this video because I feel like I learned a lot just researching it. So hopefully I can help you guys learn a lot more stuff. And as always, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. But that's enough of me. You can see my socials below. I have a Patreon now. Check out my Patreon. Okay, that's it. Let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to be going over today is roles. So this is like the very basic start of building a team comp. So what are the different roles that you have and each character can have in your team? So you have a DPS, um, that's what you'll commonly hear referred to as. It stands for damage per second. And basically all you need to know, it's your highest damage dealer. For me, that's my baby Zhao. I love Zhao, he is my DPS. He does the most damage out of anyone on my team. Um, so I'll use him in a team or when I'm doing Abyss, it's him on one team and Yoimi on the other team because she does a lot of damage. You can build almost anyone to be a DPS. There are obviously some characters that lean more towards being a DPS. Yes, Zhao, for example, is what you'll hear a lot of people call very selfish. It says he doesn't really do like a lot of reactions and stuff. He's just like pure doing damage all the time. But so there are definitely a lot of characters that lean towards like doing damage. And if you want to learn more about like crit rate and stats like that, I have a video on artifacts where I go over that stuff. So I'll have that link. But basically that's what your DPS does. They do the most damage out of everyone on your team and they're built to do a lot of damage. Your sub DPS, your secondary damage dealer. It's great if they can set up some elemental reactions for your DPS. DPS, which we'll get into in just a bit, but basically like if you have a cryo DPS and a pyro sub DPS, they can set up melt comps together, all of that fun stuff. So they're just like your second damage dealer. The sub DPS isn't as hard of a hitter as the DPS, but there's someone that can pair really well with your DPS to make them even stronger. Then you have the support. So a lot of people build their teams in different ways. The support in general just helps your team survive with some buffs, some debuffs, heals, shields, all of that stuff. So a buff is something that it could add to your team, whether that's pyro attacks being stronger and you have a pyro DPS. A debuff could be like making enemies take 50% more damage. Anything that like has your characters hit harder or your enemies take more damage. That's kind of what a buff and a debuff is. And your heals and shields, they do what they say. So someone that heals or someone that throws up a shield. Or if you have Diona, who is a god, by the way, she does both. I generally build my teams with like my DPS, my sub DPS, and then I'll do, honestly, a lot of the times I just like add like another support. So right now, like I'm kind of using Raiden Shogun as my support because of her E. So I'll have her kind of as a support character. She's also kind of like a sub DPS. And I have Dona, Dona, <laughs> Diona taking care of my heals and my shields. There's another way you can build if you don't have someone like Diona. A lot of times you'll see people will do like a DPS, a sub DPS, and then have someone do a shield like Zhongli or Toma, for example, and then have someone heal like a Seiyu or Bennett. Another person who heals and shields is also Noelle if you have her constellations. The general way that you're gonna compose your team would be like DPS, sub DPS, and then two supports. Obviously you can mix and match, do whatever you want. You can do all the crazy things that you want in the game, however you want to play. But that's generally what you'll hear people talking about when they're building their teams and what they actually look like. But yeah, that's the roles for your team. All right, next up we have Elemental Resonance. Elemental Resonance is great because you can always reference it because it's in the party menu in your game. You can actually see your Elemental Resonance. But I'm just gonna go over exactly what they are and what they do. First Elemental Resonance we'll talk about is Fervent Flames. So that's when you have two pyro characters in your party. So this means you're affected by cryo for 40% less time and your attacks increase by 25%. Really nice boost. I actually really like 
for open flames. I don't have two pyros that I really use. I need to build Bennett so I can use that. But next up we have soothing water. So that's when you have two hydro characters. That means you're affected by pyro for 40% less time and it actually increases incoming healing by 30%. I feel like Barbara, if we're going for like a hydro healer, maybe Kakomi, but Kakomi's so cracked at healing. I feel like you don't really need that. <laughs> next up we have high voltage, which means two electro characters. This means that you're affected by hydro for 40% less time. And then super conduct overloaded and electro charge so like the electro reactions have a 100% chance to generate electro elemental particles. So you'll get those particles to like fill up your skills. You'll be good to go. <laughs> Next up, we have shattering ice. So this is when you have two cryo characters in your team. This means you're affected by electro for 40% less time and it increases your crit rate against enemies that are frozen or affected by cryo by 15%. It's a pretty cool one. Next up, we have Impetuous Winds. This is two animal characters. It decreases your stamina consumption by 15%. It increases your movement speed by 10%. It actually shortens your skill cooldown by 5% as well. It kind of just makes everything faster. I used to do Impetuous Winds a lot. I would do Zhao and Venti together. After I stopped putting Venti on that team, I noticed that I felt like I was like moving slower. <laughs> It's like a 10%, so it's not that big, but you definitely feel it once you get used to it and you get rid of it. <laughs> then you have Enduring Rock, which is two Geo characters. This increases your shield strength by 15%. And it also has like characters that are protected by the shield, have special characteristics, which will include damage dealt by them increasing by 15%. Dealing damage to enemies will decrease their Geo resistance by 20% for 15 seconds. So. Again, this is really good for your Geo characters. And then Protective Canopy, you'll hear a lot of people call this rainbow. It's just like everyone has a different element in your team. I do this a lot. <laughs> it's not like, I feel like it's not the best one. So it's all elemental resistance increases by 15% and physical resistance increases by 14%. It's definitely not like the most interesting little bonus from Elemental Resonance, but I do this a lot. And it's actually a good example because you really don't have to like follow Elemental Resonances, but they're a cool thing that you can incorporate if you have like a team that would work out. And what's great is all the other ones besides the rainbow comp go by two. So you could do two pyro, two hydro and get the bonuses from fervent flames and soothing water. You can kind of combine those resonances. Again, they're not an end all be all. So feel free to mix and match people however you'd like, but it is something to be aware of if you want to have some more fun with your team comps and just be aware of what they do. Next up, we have reaction team composition. This is basically what those reactions mean when you see melt, vaporize, overload. What what does that mean and how should I be utilizing them on my team? What do they even do? That's what I've been wondering <laughs> and I never bothered to research it until now. So let me share my newfound knowledge with you. We're gonna start off with melt. So melt is a cryo and pyro reaction. So you get the ice and the fire. First thing to note with melt is that the order matters. So if you do cryo and then pyro, pyro will be the one to trigger the melt comp. It deals pyro damage two times the pyro attack. So you're doing double the damage of the pyro attack there. So that's what melt will do in that case. Pyro then cryo, you'll deal cryo damage 1.5 times the cryo attack. They're like slightly different. <laughs> the cryo only gets 1.5, the pyro gets two times. It just matters which one that you're triggering. But either way, you're getting close to double the damage that that last attack would have. And just note that it's only going off of the last attack, the one that triggers it, right? It's going off that cryo damage. That is what Melt does. Next up, we have Vaporize. Vaporize is Pyro and Hydro together. This is another one where the order matters, all right? So if you do Hydro first, you wet the enemy first, and then you hit them with Pyro, your Pyro damage is gonna be 1.5 times stronger. And then if you go Pyro first and then Hydro, your Hydro damage will be two times stronger. Very, very similar to Melt. This is kind of like reversed. <laughs> Next up, we have Overload. This is Electro and Pyro together. This is an interesting one. So listen carefully. The damage that this does is solely based on the level of your character and elemental mastery. All right. So it deals extra damage to geo structures and shields. I actually didn't know this. And I started using like Raiden and Yoimiya together so much more to take out geo shields. And it was so helpful, especially in the abyss. So Electro and Pyro together do a bomb ass job at getting rid of those geo shields for real for real this one it does not matter the order that you do it in okay but even if the attack triggers multiple overloads each enemy is only going to take one instance of the overload damage so just be aware you can't do it like multiple times but this goes off of character level you can see here what the character level will be in the base damage feel free to pause if you want to like 
really go in on that. But yeah, it's totally based on character to le level, which I thought was so interesting. I would never think, I don't know, I never think about character level in this way, but it's really cool. I also think this is very interesting because so many times we tell everyone like, oh, it's not worth leveling people to level 90. And in many cases that is true, but if you're in the position where you want to level 90 someone and they're doing like reactions like this, they do do a pretty a pretty decent um, difference. You can see on this one, for example, you go from 2100 to 2900. Again, it's not massive, but like there are other areas Areas where being level 90 can um, kind of affect things, not just your character stats. I hope that makes sense. You don't have to level 90 everyone, they're fine at 80. <laughs> but in case you're wondering what else level 90 does. Next up we have Freeze. So this is Cryo and Hydro. I used to use this so much, Chong Yun and Mona together would eat this up. And I'm gonna tell you why. Obviously freeze freezes your targets, right? The duration of freeze is based on the level of the character that triggers the reaction. Again, so it's the last character to do something. If I do ice first with Chong Yun and then Mona, Mona is gonna be the one whose level matters. And then the reverse if I do it the other way. So the max it can last is 3.5 seconds. So the frozen targets can be shattered by a claymore, which is why Chong Yun is really good to do freeze with. You can shatter them with like a claymore, it's awesome. So the shatter deals 25% extra physical damage than a normal attack does. And you can't freeze all enemies. You can kind of see in this clip here, I tried to freeze child. I was just trying to figure out how to like showcase this. And it's so funny because it says freeze, but he doesn't freeze. Obviously like bosses like that go through the motions. But I just think it's kind of funny that you can't freeze everyone. And also character level matters for the damage that freeze does as well. Again, you can see here what the character levels are and the damage that they do. I hope you guys are liking this so far. Also so if you are a member on my Patreon, you'll get access to the script for this. So you'll be able to like go through all of my notes and see exactly like what it is. So it's a good reference if you're trying to build teams as well. Next up, we're gonna jump over to Electro Charge. So that's Electro and Hydro. Big warning with this one. Do not trigger this one while you are standing in water. It will hurt you, okay? It will absolutely hurt you. It does AOE. And before we talk about AOE, let's clarify what AOE. AOE is area of effect. It's very common, especially in Genshin. Basically, it's just like this fixed area around you will be affected. So Electro plus Hydro, making Electro charged, can deal damage twice to the same target and then bounce between all the wet characters in that area, all right? So that's the AOE. It's like a large fixed area. You can reapply this to the same target if they become wet again, which is really nice. You can kind of keep doing this. It scales with your character level and elemental mastery again. Elemental mastery just really helps with all these like reactions and stuff. That's why it's great for people like Venti because you're using his like swirl to create reactions. Elemental mastery just like really boosts how effective these can be. And you can see again here, we have the little chart character level, the base damage. Again, I'm not gonna go through every single one, but you can definitely look here or check out the all the notes on Patreon if it's easier for you to do that. Next up, we have our super conduct. That's gonna be electro and cryo together. So this deals AOE cryo damage. Again, that fixed area of effect. It also reduces physical defense by 50%. This does not work for your elemental attacks, right? It's just physical, so like your normal attacks. Definitely don't use a catalyst if you're doing this, don't trigger this and then use a catalyst because it's just, they're not gonna do the damage that you want them to do. I feel like Rosaria, because Rosaria can do great physical damage, could be great for this. Eula, for example. Um, but yeah, make sure you're not trying to do elemental attacks because you will not benefit from the super conduct. The damage is again based on the level of characters that trigger the reaction. So again, the last character that does this, the one that triggers the reaction, that's the characters whose level matters. The debuff max lasts is eight seconds and this does the least amount of upfront damage. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage when you trigger it, but the debuff allows you to do some crazy damage afterwards. So a lot of people might not like it because they feel like it doesn't do a lot of damage, but you really need to hit them after to take advantage of this reaction. Next up we have Swirl. Swirl is Animo plus anything. Venti is the best example of Swirl. He like swoops everyone into his little tornado and you can like, I've used Yoimiya to shoot some fire in there. You can throw a bunch of different elements in there. It is awesome. I really do like Swirl. It's damage based on the character level and again, elemental mastery. The great thing about Swirl is you can chain reactions, right? You can throw Pyro, Electro in there and get, get that reaction. You can throw Electro Cryo in there to get like that super conduct. You can just do like a bunch of stuff in the Swirl. It's great. It's just like a 
freaking melting pot of reactions. And I think that's why Venti is so awesome. But it deals elemental damage of the non-animo element. Um, and again here, you can see a little chart of your character level and the base swirl damage that will happen. So swirl, as you can see by like the other reactions we've gone over, like the swirl damage itself isn't really what does a lot. It's just that fact that it's continuously generating these reactions that really just like makes it really cool. And it's great for crowd control. Zhao, what I said earlier, he's kind of selfish. He technically can trigger swirl, but he's not gonna do it consistently enough for it to actually matter, um, in my opinion, at least. So someone like Venti is great for this. Um, Sucrose is another one that's great. And even Traveler, Anima Traveler is great for this, but definitely not someone like Zhao. <laughs> okay, and then we have Crystallize. So Crystallize is the one that was the most confusing to me. I was always like, what the heck? is this even doing? I don't understand. So do you know, some of you guys might know this and I might seem dumb, but you know when you see those like gems, I'll show them on the screen. Those like gems that like, you just pick them up and then you get a shield that's that color. Okay, so that's actually crystallized working. This will happen a lot when you're doing like Geo Vishhaps, Astrahal, like a lot of times like just fighting them, you'll get one of those little guys. It's actually pretty cool. So Crystallize doesn't deal any damage. That's why a lot of people don't like it. You don't get that extra bonus damage, those debuffs, but the reaction generates a matching elemental shard. So those gems, and they can be picked up and you gain an elemental shield of the corresponding element. So if you're picking up a purple one, it's gonna be Electro. So if you use Geo and Electro together, you'll get a purple gem and you can use an Electro shield. Those shields are pretty cool because the crystallized shield health, it's based on the level and amount of mastery of the character that triggered the reaction, which you can kind of see here. You can pause if you wanna really go into that. But the really cool thing about it is these shields have a 250% effectiveness against elemental damage of that element. So if you do Geo and Electro, you gain a shield that's 250% more effective against Electro, which is really cool. You can take 40% of the damage, like more damage. I think that's really cool. The character level is what deals with the, with the base HP. Yeah, we can show it up here again. So the base HP, that character level is doing the base HP of that shield. And then the elemental mastery is adding that bonus HP percentage to the shield. So that's pretty cool. I think crystallize is a pretty cool reaction. It's definitely slept on. It's personally not my favorite. I don't use geo characters that much. I am building Ito though. So I think that might change, but it's cool to know that's what crystallize does. Cause I feel like I was always just like, what is this even doing? And now I know, and now you know. So I hope that helps. So overall, when you're kind of building your team, you really want to first obviously pick characters that you love to play with. Like there's no point in building a team of characters you don't like just for meta if you're not gonna be happy playing the game. If building a team for meta really, really makes you like satisfied and it feels great crushing like these enemies, for sure do it. But I think you can also have a balance where you're working with characters that you love and also working on making them super, super strong. When you're building a team, definitely keep in mind these elemental reactions, what the team comps actually do, those bonuses that they give you and what your structure is, what your DPS can do, your sub DPS. Can they trigger these elemental reactions together? All of that fun stuff. I hope this was really helpful for you guys. I like just researching this made me learn like, <laughs> I just feel like I learned so much. <laughs> and thank you so much. We just launched our Patreon and the Sky's Altair was my first Patreon. We just launched it. They were early because they were on Fan House. We just moved over there. So if you want access to the script with all of my notes, all the images and all that stuff that you can easily reference, make sure to join the Patreon because I will give it to you. Patreons have access to that sort of stuff as well as a bunch of other benefits I would definitely recommend checking out by clicking the link below. Also, if you're not already, make sure you hit the Discord link um, and join the Discord. Come hang out with us. We just did a day where I did like the potion event. We're gonna be doing wind trace. We're having a Jackbox night. So there's a lot of fun stuff going on there. I'd love to have you guys get involved. And as always, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Um, let me know in the comments down below if this helped you out, what your team comp looks like. If there's anything new you learned, I'd love, 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 love to hear it. Thanks as always for supporting the content. It means a lot to me and I'm glad you guys watch it because I have a lot of fun making it. And that's it. I will see you guys next week and yeah, have a good one. Bye.